Hey there, Omaha. Welcome into another episode of Restaurant Hoppin'. I am so excited to talk about a restaurant called La Sierra today. And what I love about this restaurant is that it offers awesome Mexican food, just maybe not in the way most Omahans or even Americans think of Mexican food. This menu has no nachos, no uh, no tacos, uh, and the burritos are not at all what you would expect from you know a Chipotle or Taco Bell, anything like that. And that's an amazing thing. That's what I want to highlight on today's episode. And that's why I have Brenda Caceres of La Sierra in here to talk about her family's restaurant. Brenda, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here and happy to be able to share a little bit more about our family business, a little bit about our menu, our offerings, tell um, Omaha the kind of things that we offer and why we're a little bit more unique than your traditional Mexican restaurant. So let's just start there right off the bat. If somebody hasn't visited La Sierra before and they're like, either they're hearing about it for the first time or they're stopping into the restaurant for the first time, how would you describe the food? Um, I start off by explaining a little bit about our menu. So it's very traditional. It's unique to where we're from in Mexico. Uh, We are from a state called Durango or Durango for uh, the Hispanic audience. Um, We um, focus on four main things, which are our plates, our gorditas, our burritos and our quesadillas. Um, So just those main four offerings, which off the bat are a little bit different. A lot of people do go in, you know, asking for tacos or, you know, tortas or something like this. And we off the bat do not offer those things. Um, We're really specific to those four main offerings. But uh, from those four main offerings, we actually have about 14, 16 different filling options that can go into those four things. Um, So just going a little bit deeper into what those are, um, they are homemade recipes, kind of like. If you're to have guests in your home, this is something that we would make for you. This is more um, home style than more commercialized like tacos, steak tacos, beef and cheese, you know, just chicken with like cilantro on top. So um, my mom is our chef. She is the one that makes all of these homemade recipes for us. They are very traditional and unique to where we're from. We have some offerings that are very unique that, you know, most places don't offer. For example, um, one of the most, I guess, exotic or different, I would say, um, offerings would be the tender cactus and egg. So a lot of people hear that and they get turned off like, no, I would definitely not try that. But it's something that really sells really well. It's really good. Uh, And our recipes are made daily, homemade, and they are just traditional and delicious. So when you talk about sticking to those four main items, the gorditas, the burritos, quesadillas, and the plates. Yes. Is that because those are kind of the four staples of the cuisine in Durango? Are those four things that are really special to your family where, yes, there are tacos and there are tortas and there are other things available in Durango, but these are the things that are really special to us. That's what we want to bring to Omaha. Exactly. Yes. It's not to say that in Durango or in Mexico, we don't have tortas or tacos. We definitely do, you know, indulge in those as well. But the staple, like you said, are gorditas. We have um, included burritos, quesadillas and plates to not only just focus on gorditas, which in um, where we're from, um, there's different restaurants that are um, very similar to what we do, and they offer nothing else but gorditas. So we already knew that it would be something different to have gorditas and not tacos. So we said we can't limit people to just gorditas. So let's offer burritos, quesadillas and plates as well. Um, but yes, a lot of different states like here in the U.S. will focus on different things. You know, there's some states that focus maybe more on seafood. There's other states that do more like chicken. Um, and so our state is more homemade things and made out of corn. Gorditas are definitely a staple. And we're going to get more into gorditas because I they're, they're really, really good. And I think that they're different than even what most people listening to this right now would expect. Right. But first off, I want to just lay it out. If anyone's listening to this conversation and they're like, man, this food sounds awesome. <laughs> Where do I get this? Yes. La Sierra is located right off 13th and Martha. You got the nice bright, you know, orange signage and everything. Yes. It's very easy to find, very easy to see. Uh, just punch that into your GPS. You're going to have a good time. Yes. Um, it's actually on 10th street, 1710, uh, 10th street. So we're right on the corner of 10th and Hickory. You can, um, find us there. We're literally right next to Cashio steakhouse. So you're familiar with, with that steakhouse. We're literally right next to them on the corner. So we've talked a little bit about how some of these menu items are a little bit different from what Omaha's can expect. So like a burrito, Mm -hmm. 
you know, when people hear burrito, they think of this big, thick, like almost football like <laughs> yes. thing just stuffed with rice and beans and meat and exactly. sour cream and cheese and all this stuff. Right. But for you guys, it's a tortilla that's filled with a few ingredients, not a ton, mm-hmm. but a few, and then rolled lengthwise. So it's kind of more long and skinny. And the gordita, as opposed to just being basically like a a flatbread taco, is like a it, it's a masa that has been hollowed out, and it's more of like a um, a pocket almost. How fun is it for you? when people come into the restaurant and they have these preconceived notions <laughs> of what your menu items are and you get to say, no, 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 no. You know, th- those foods are fine. There's nothing wrong with those. Exactly. But where I come from, a burrito means something different. And I get to show that to you today. How fun is that for you and your family? Yeah, I personally love it. Um, I think it's an opportunity to be able to show people a little bit about where we're from, our tradition, our foods, how we make them and how they're different to the things that they may have tried, you know, at other places. You know, I know that Taco Bell, for example, may have something that they call a gordita and it's completely different. The concept may be the same, but the texture itself, the taste, you know, is not authentic. It's not Mexican what we consider Mexican and maybe maybe a little bit more of a Tex-Mex twist. And then that's where I get that opportunity to be able to say that may be delicious and it's good, but this is how we make it. This is how we, um, you know, make it our own. So our gorditas are, like you said, it's a masa. Uh, What we do is we slice it open and we fill it with any of those 14 options that I had mentioned to you um, that we offer. Some places that do offer gorditas as well, they deep fry them. So it gives it a little bit different texture, um, a different taste as well. Sometimes you could taste like the oil that it's been processed in. We don't do that at our um, restaurant. Our gorditas are made fresh. They're made on the spot. And then we fill it with any of those 14 options that you can pick from. So they are made fresh. And I just enjoy it sometimes when, you know, I'm explaining this. And sometimes they are like, oh, you know, I've never tried it before. So I'll just go with the burrito that I've tried and I know that I like. Uh, we take that opportunity to then bring out some little sample gorditas and, and have them try it anyway. You know, this is what you are missing out on. Here's a little taste of what it is. And then we just say, oh, my God, this is delicious. I'm glad that you brought us some. Let's order some more. And, you know, that's when I can say, you know, um, I've been able to introduce you to something new. You like it. And now you can, you know, choose for yourself. And what's that feeling like for you, especially for the doubters who say, "Mm, I don't know if I want something new to have them Mm -hmm. be like, whoa, I've never had anything like this. Yes, bring me some more. I can't even imagine what that feeling's like for you. It's very satisfying. Um, You know, it makes us really happy that we've been able to share a little bit about our food with somebody else. They like it. They love it. And now they've, you know, made a review. They've made a comment. They made a post or they go home and they tell somebody else. And then later on, those people come and say, someone so referred us. And, you know, it's just all around satisfying. I love taking that information back to my family and saying, look, we've converted this person that, you know, came in here kind of like, oh, this is what you're offering. Or I was really looking forward to steak tacos or, you know, a a torta. And they left and they had like four or five, six gorditas. And now they've not only came and tried our food and enjoyed it, but now they've recommended somebody else and someone else. And so that's super satisfying. Okay. Let's get into those fillings that you can put inside of a, well, inside of any of your offerings, really. You mentioned one of them. We've got 13 more. (laughs) I'm not going to ask you to list all 13, for sure. but maybe hit me with two or three more like really popular ones or ones that you think are really special. And then just kind of highlight what it is about those that are going to elicit flavors different than what a lot of people have experienced. Yeah. So um, I think for most traditional Mexican restaurants, it's that steak again. It's, you know, chicken, if anything, there's barbacoa and birria, which is coming, uh, becoming very popular. Our guisados are a little bit different. Those filling options, uh, we have pork, which is our number one seller. So they are um, small little chunks of pork and a thick ancho pepper sauce. It's not spicy. It's full of flavor. Um, and it just happens to consistently be our number one seller since we've opened. Um, so definitely, if you're going to go try a gordita, or any of the other three fillings, I'd say definitely try one of those. Um, If you're looking for something spicy, we have the shredded beef. It's super delicious, but it does have a kick. Um, I have noticed that sometimes I say, hey, you know, of our 13 plus offerings, we have two 
that are spicy. And people go up for the challenge and say, yeah, it's all right. Go ahead, bring it on. Let's do it. Um, and so later on, we'll have some that are sweating it out, but like make it through. And there's others that are like, it was not that bad. It's great. I'm used to, you know, having habaneros or ghost peppers or something like that. And they really enjoy it. So if you're looking for something spicy, we definitely have something for you. If you're wanting to stay away from the spicy stuff, there's like 12 plus options that are not spicy. So are these all family recipes? They are. Yes. So um, our pork and ancho pepper sauce is something very traditional to where we're from or in our state. Um, usually for like the weddings or like big events, this is like one of the offerings that they would have. This um, asado de puerco with rice and beans and homemade tortillas. I mean, that's like a staple. Mm hmm. And when we're talking about family recipes developed by your parents or going back further than that? I think um, further than that. So I know for sure my grandmother taught my mother and my mother is now the one who's making these recipes for us. So where did the nopales and eggs? Where is that? Because like you yeah. said, that sounds like a wild combination, but it just it works it like does. Yes. So tell me as much as you know about it, please tell me about it. So um, I think it's not just our family. I've, I think it's something like very common for people in, in the state that we're from to eat it. Um, it's something like as common as it would be here to have like pancakes and hash browns or, you know, um, your your grits. That that's kind of what it would be for us. Like tender cactus and egg is something for, you know, more humble people, more simple people. Definitely not a fancy plate, but something very unique. Um, and that we would have normally. So, all right, let's, let's get into gorditas a little bit more. Yeah. Um, because I just, I, I love how like simple they are, but yet they're like really portable. Uh, you know, that they're, if you have several of them, they're very filling and they don't have a bunch of filler. I right. think I think that's what I love about them most. There's not the sour cream, the cheese, the lettuce, the tomatoes, all the stuff that you might find at a Tex-Mex place here. It's like we're going to give you the fresh tortilla. We're going or the fresh masa, excuse me. We're going to give you whatever filling you want that is just going to burst with <laughs> flavor and we're going to let those two things be the shining star. And you mentioned, you know, there are restaurants in in Durango that are like basically just gorditas. Exactly. What is it about this food item that makes it so special um, to that area, to that region? I think it's simplicity. Like you said right now, it's so simple, but yet it's so tasty. There's other places that, you know, can offer different things, but then they fill it with all these different things to, you know, make it look more, uh, I don't know, fancier to make it look more filling. But at the end of the day, these things are like lettuce, tomato that maybe you would just take out of your gordita and not want it on your taco. You know, um, there's a lot of people that go in and say, um, go ahead and give me, you know, this filling, but please no cilantro. And I say, don't worry. That's definitely not something that we add in any of our uh, filling options. So you're safe. Um, but definitely, I think it's simplicity. Um, it makes it something so simple, but yet so delicious. The ingredients that we um, have and that we use to make our gorditas, some of them or most of them are imported from Durango. So it's really? fresh. It's delicious. Our chile, we get our chile ancho from Durango. We import that in. Our cheese that we use, also called queso menon. Um, these are the Mennonites that make this in Durango. So it's all these different ingredients make it, you know, simple, but yet delicious and homemade. Now, why go to that extra effort? Because you, you take somebody like me who mm -hmm. doesn't have, you know, I would have no idea if the cheese is coming from Mexico, if the chilies are coming from there, or if you went, right. you know, I'm not even talking like a, just a normal grocery store in Omaha, but you could even go to, you know, one of the Mercados or something. Right. But you guys go to that extra effort to, I mean, first you would have to travel down there and actually find reputable sources, but then order in, I assume that's not only more effort, but it's more cost. It Why is. go to that extra effort? Because we want people to be able to offer or to taste the, um, our food just as we make it right. We don't want to supplement it and give you something like a gordita with cheddar cheese or sour cream that as much as some people, you know, would want the Tex-Mex switch. We want you to taste it exactly as it's meant to be with our ingredients, just like we would make it at home and eat it at home. We want everyone to experience it as it should be. Okay. Now tell me about the burritos because you guys are the only, and again, I haven't had much experience with food from Durango and mm -hmm. I've never been to Mexico myself. So maybe this is far more common than I realized, but every other burrito I've seen, even at Mexican restaurants is kind of that thicker, you know, 
tucked and rolled style burrito where you guys are doing the long skinny one with again only a couple ingredients what is it about that style that made you guys lean into that so i feel like the big burritos are definitely more of a americanized thing right the field burritos that were you know made in california to be able to feed um the workers in a short period of time so that they can continue working so they would pack all this food into that one burrito because you know they wanted to give them something that would fill them up keep them energized and keep going right so that's where the, the field burrito came with the rice, the beans, the chicken, the lettuce, all in one. But again, back to the simplicity. In Mexico, where we're from, in the state of Durango, um, the burritos were thin. Um, I'm not saying it's more of a fancy thing. It was more, I think, it came from we have less to provide our families, right? So the burritos won't be filled with a lot of things. They will be thin, but they will be just 100% the filling option. We won't offer these fancy things like maybe um, fillers or lettuce or tomatoes tomato to make it big and bulky. We're just going to make them thin, but they're going to have 100% the meat, the cheese or the pork, whatever you want, um, and just give it 100% flavor. So, And what I love about it is it allows you to try several different things. Definitely. Like if I go into Chipotle, I'm only trying one or two meats. And like you said, that's going to be mixed with a ton of rice, all the other stuff, you know, whatever. But if I come into La Sierra, I can try three gorditas, two burritos, you know, I'm probably going to be leaving pretty full at that point, exactly. but I could try, you know, you've got the 14 different fillings. I could try several of those in one meal and get a more well-rounded experience and just more flavors and just kind of the same flavor profile over and over again. Now I have a pretty good idea to answer this question. All you guys, gorditas <laughs> and tortillas are homemade, correct? Our gorditas are gorditas, and our yes. flour tortillas as well. Okay. What does that process entail? Because I think people hear that and they're like, oh, that sounds great. But that's a lot more effort than I think a lot of people understand, right? Definitely. And so that's why we strive to differentiate our product and to stick to what we do. So it would be a lot easier to say, well, we're not going to make our homemade tortillas, but we are going to have tacos, right? Since everyone keeps asking about tacos. But we're, you know, trying to stick, stay true to our roots and say as, as easy as it may be to just get corn tortillas from a store and make tacos to please someone, we'd rather not have that offering, but have homemade tortillas that we're making fresh. Um, and, and the taste is different, you know? So while the variety may not be there, you know, of having enchiladas, tacos, and tortas, we offer um, less options, but they are homemade. And um, I hope that you could taste it. You could um, taste the homemade, the flavor, the recipes, and just say this is well worth it. One thing that I can't help but notice is just how portable these menu items are. I mean, you could easily eat them walking down the street, in your car, wh whatever you might want to do. Is that something that's really important in Durango, the ability to eat things on the go? It is. Um, and actually, um, I guess you can say it's kind of like a memory that I have from um, when I was younger is that <clears throat> um, having gorditas on the train on the way back, either from Durango, the city, back to where we're from, our smaller town, um, ladies would, um, older ladies would get on this train while the train is stopped. You know, people are sitting in their seats, finding their spots, and they'd have this basket of gorda, gorditas, homemade gorditas in like a, kind of like a baking sheet paper. And so they'd, you know, go through all the little um, trains, the little wagons and say, how many do you want? How many do you want? Hurry. And so you'd order, you know, six or so because you know that they were delicious and they're small, like you said, on purpose, right? The concept of our menu is to mix and match different filling options, but on this train, you'd have like two options, um, which would be kind of like bean and cheese and sometimes, uh, uh, what's it called? Sausage, Mexican sausage and eggs. And so we would get those, eat them, and they're handheld. So a lot of people don't know how to eat gorditas or they don't know if they should ask for a fork, a knife, or anything like that. These are handheld items, right? You could just pick up your gordita. Like you said, it's very portable. Um, but in my memory um, of this gorditas on this wagon uh, train station back to Durango, pretty much um, you'd the whole ride back would be maybe two or three hours. Um, but yeah, that's something that you could just you know, on your train station on the way back, you could read a book, you could be talking with your friends, you could do whatever you'd like, but having these gorditas to and from um, the station back to Durango or where we're from, which is about three hour drive. I love that you have this food item tied back to a core memory and you, you can like draw on that reserve because I feel like that's one of those things where on 
because the restaurant business is really hard. We were just talking off the mics like you guys were recording this on April 1st. Yesterday was Easter. You guys were open when a lot of people were celebrating or going out to brunch. You guys are working. Right. In times like that, when the restaurant industry is hard or when you're just getting slammed or, or maybe you're not getting slammed and you don't have a lot of business, like I've found from talking to people in the industry, that's kind of what keeps you going in those tough times is remembering I'm not, yes, I'm doing this to make money, right. but I'm not just in this for the money. I'm in this because I have this memory. This is something that's special to me going back whether it's to my childhood, whether it's, you know, early years, whatever it might be, there's a reason that I'm doing that's that's beyond this is my business, right? Right. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's um, not just a core memory for myself, but I think it's something that, you know, is significant to my family. So not only is it unique to us because it's unique to where we're from, but I think it gives us that sense of um, connectivity to our roots and makes us, you know, miss home and we have a piece of home in everything that we do. Um, so when people come and they try our food and they say, oh my God, this is delicious. It reminds me of my grandma's cooking. It, I almost feel like my grandma's back there in the kitchen cooking these things for me. I mean, it just takes us back to, and it makes us feel good because we say it's not only us remembering our food and keeping it alive. It's also sharing with other people and having them, you know, go back and reflect on their core memories too. Tell me about Mexican hot dogs. Cause that's, oh my gosh. that's something <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure if they're on the menu right now, but it's something you guys started a food cart. They've been on the menu at times. Mexican hot dogs go. Yeah. So the Mexican hot dogs um, are really interesting. They're delicious. Um, our spin on it is that it's just the toppings that will make it a Mexican hot dog. So the sausage is wrapped in bacon. We serve it with caramelized onions, um, tomatoes, bell pepper. It's delicious. Mm. We top it off with pico de gallo, and then we could have a chile toriado on the side, which is basically a cooked jalapeno. So it is just mouthwatering. It's delicious. It's, you know, it's, you got to try it. And are you guys offering those in restaurant right now? We are, yeah. So our little cart is closed right now because the weather was not that great. We didn't think, you know, it was smart to have someone work out there in this miserable weather, but we are offering them inside. So you can call and place your order ahead of time so that you can just swing by and pick them up or you can wait inside while we make them for you. Awesome. Yeah. Now I want to get into the backstory of the restaurant a little bit. You and your parents are born in Durango. Yes. Your sister was born in Chicago. Correct. What brought you guys to Omaha? We've actually been in Chicago for many, many years. We um, came to Omaha around 2008. That's when like there was a lot of, you know, a recession. People were losing their jobs or homes. My mom's um, family was here in Nebraska and they said, hey, come check it out. Come try it out. Cost of living is a lot cheaper. You'll like it here. Give it a shot. So we came here on a whim. We thought, you know, we'll, we'll check it out, see if we can make a living here and, and maybe lay some roots. My mentality was, you know, being in my early 20s, I was like, no, I am just going to um, help them get on their feet. And I'm going back to Chicago to what I've known, my family, my friends. And um, our family is super, super close. Um, as you can tell, my sister's here for moral support, of course. So we are very, very united. And I just couldn't leave them. So I ended up staying here. We opened up our business. We bought our home. So this is home now. You mentioned mom's the chef. She is. But did any of you guys have experience in the restaurant industry previously? Yeah. So in Chicago, we actually had a restaurant that was chicken. Oh, okay. Um, it was um, selling chicken kind of like KFC would be. Um, you know, it's selling it by the piece or just selling the chicken whole. We'd have sides that we'd offer. And we were located on this main street and it was just doing so well. We had an issue with the lease because we were subleasing from someone else and it looked like that was not going to, you know, flow through. Um, so that we had to close our restaurant, but it was going really well. And I think when we moved here to Omaha, you know, we just sparked the idea of what about we do something again in the restaurant business. Um, but we decided to do, tweak it up a little bit and we came up with the gorditas instead. Now, why did you tweak it? If it was mm -hmm. successful in Chicago, you must've had a great recipe. I'm assuming you had yes. a pretty good business plan and everything. What made you say, okay, that, that was good, but that was for another time. Mm -hmm. Let's do a pivot here. 
Well, we wanted to see um, how this would uh, plan out just because there's no other people doing the same gorditas as us, the same guisados as us. There's no restaurant offering the same infer- or the same offerings. So there was no competition. Um, chicken, a lot of other places sell chicken here, either in the food trucks, you know, or, you know, at restaurants, they sell chicken in, in places, in pieces or whole. So we just wanted to offer something that wasn't already available so that we could have a new menu. So... I want to talk a little bit about the balance of introducing something new sure. because on one hand there, there's a huge risk in saying no one else in Omaha is offering gorditas and this style of burritos. We have no idea if this market is going to go for it, right? But if they do, mm-hmm. no one else <laughs> is offering this. Like we can corner that part of the market and really, you know, capture this audience, but that's a huge yin and yang like a really big balancing beam what were those discussions like as you were trying to figure out we have this food that we love we know we can make it really well Mm -hmm. but is this market gonna understand it are they gonna catch it what were those discussions like yeah so um definitely very difficult um conversations to have because like you said on the one hand we thought will this be profitable right are people really going to want it and accept it because of the fact that we're not offering the basics of when Someone thinks of a Mexican restaurant off the bat. They think these big burritos. They think, you know, enchiladas, flautas. They think of all these other things that we don't offer. But we saw it more of as an opportunity to introduce, introduce something more homemade, right? There's people who offer gorditas, but they don't offer them the same way that we do. They don't offer the same fillings that we do. Um, we know that there's a big community of people here in Omaha specifically that are from the same state, that are from the same um, places. And so we thought, you know, if they're if they enjoy their food, if they miss the food, um, we're going to have, you know, a good opportunity, a good window, a good audience um, for them to come and say, this is food I haven't had in a long time. I miss home and want to show it to other people. Right. And say, hey, I want you to try some of my food from home. I can't go back or, you know, I haven't had it in a long time or nobody from my family's around still that could make it. But come check out this place that makes food just like home. So we saw, you know, let's go ahead and take the risk. And and here we are. And did you see those families come out early on? We have. Yes, we have. And a lot of people, even from different states that will come in and say, oh, my God, we're so glad that we have it here. We're here for the zoo. We saw you guys down the street. We had to come try it. And we're so glad. And every time that we come back to Omaha, we are going to make a different stop. And we've seen them. We've seen them come back and we remember them and they're happy that we remember them as well. Um, So it's great. Yeah. Something that I've become really interested in is when restaurants open kind of the design and the the atmosphere of the restaurant. So sure. it, it's it's not just, I mean, yes, restaurants have to serve good food to stay open, but so much of it is just the overall experience of dining there. How did you guys craft La Sierra to create that experience that you wanted a diner to have as well? So that's another thing too that I think we've gone back and forth with a lot, not just internally ourselves, but also with feedback that we get from people that that. Um, whose value, whose opinion that we value. So a lot of feedback that we've gotten is, why don't you guys have, you know, more uh, vivid colors, more like the green, the red, the orange, um, just different colors of when you think of a Mexican restaurant, you think of, you know, flags everywhere. You think of the the Mexican, like little... um, what do we call them? Gavanes, um, which are the ones that you would put over kind of like a shawl. Um, people are expecting, you know, the, the Dia de los Muertos, kind of like those skulls. Um, and so while we wanted to do something that would reflect where we're from, we didn't want to go in that direction. So if you've, I know you visited our, our space, but it's more um, vivid. It's more light. Um, what we have are decorations that represent where we're from. So La Sierra means um, the mountains or the mountain valley. Um, And so if you've been there, you see the little pine trees that are constantly there. We have the, um, uh, what's it called, savila plant as well, the aloe plant, which is unique to where we're from as well. Um, And we started adding a little bit more decor that's, you know, uh, unique to our state. Um, the state of Durango is represented by scorpions. So the people who um, go to the restaurant that are also from Durango, they will start looking for scorpions everywhere and make a point to say, you're missing scorpions. Where, where are they? Where, where do you have them? Um, so we don't want to drive people away to think that 
scorpions are part of the menu or on the menu in some way because in some states they do eat um you know ants and um scorpions and these different kinds of things so because we don't want to send the wrong message we've kind of detracted from adding those you know unique or common symbols into our restaurant but um, we've tried to make it look more homey, more cozy, more clean, more um, white. So it feels, you know, like more light is in there and, and more peaceful, I guess you can say. That note about the scorpions is fascinating. I'm really glad that you brought it up because going back through your social media, I saw you guys have offered merch at certain points during being open. And yeah, the scorpion very pr- front and center yes. uh, in that logo. And I was just like, huh, I wonder why, why? that is. And yes. now I know. Yes, it's unique to our state, but not because there's an abundance of scorpions. Um, I learned this just recently, too. Um, The reason that the scorpion symbolizes our state of Durango is because our state has all of the species of these scorpions within our state. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's Mm -hmm. really interesting to know. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. So I'm going to take you back to the first day open. That was February 15th, 2020, which is right before the world shut down uh, due to COVID. We're not... We'll get there. I'm not going to touch that yet. I want to go back to the first day you're open. You open those doors. Customers are coming in for the first time. What do you remember most about that day? Everyone was excited and everyone was saying, we've waited so long for you guys to open. We kept seeing the coming soon sign for just the longest time. You guys have finally opened. We're excited to try your food. Um, We got a lot of support from the little Bohemian area, just our neighbors across the street, literally. And it was just great to see everybody coming in to be excited to try our food. So it was, you know, really gratifying and worth the wait. And then just a couple days later, or a, <laughs> couple, weeks. a couple weeks, you know, timelines. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was when Omaha was basically forced to f- close down, at least temporarily. What is that like for you guys? Because, I mean, you've, you've just opened a new restaurant that's offering a completely different set of menu items to a new market. And you're still... I guess not really fairly new to Omaha at that point. You guys had been here for a while, yeah. but you're, you're new to kind of being in the Omaha restaurant scene. Right. And all of a sudden you just get this gigantic grenade just tossed in your lap and you got to figure out what you're supposed to do with it. Right. What do you remember about those early conversations you had with your family? You know, we were shocked just like the rest of the world, you know, what does this mean for us? What does it mean as a business? Um, I think that as much as we wanted to be open and to continue offering, you know, our items since we had just opened, I think we were just concerned as everyone else as far as, you know, how is this going to affect everyone, right? What does this mean? Um, Will we be closed permanently for, you know, weeks, months, how long? Um, And so we had to think of what's best for our business, but also for ourselves and also for our customers. We didn't want to force anything, of course, but we also wanted to figure out, you know, all of us are are currently working here. This was that at that point, that was our only line of income. So we had to think of think fast. What are we going to do? How are we going to, you know, support each other, provide for each other? So um, we definitely had to come up with a plan as far as what we were going to do. Um, shortly after, you know, they lifted this ban of, yes, we can reopen as long as, you know, you have this set of requirements, you know, you cannot do this. You cannot have more, um, more people than this. Um, you know, what can you offer people like 20 people cannot be in your facility at one point. Um, the tables have to be separate, um, you know, and we just had to come up with an idea. So our saving grace was, um, you know, DoorDash, Uber Eats, Postmates, um, offering this stuff to go, having a driver that would say, I'm designated to delivering these food items for you. So that's literally what kept us open, is being able to provide our food and our services to go so people could have our food in the convenience of their home. So we've mentioned that, you know, it kind of worked out in you guys' favor to some extent because this food is so portable. Like, you can... No, it's not ideal to have a DoorDash driver deliver it to someone, but this is a style of food that, yes, can be eaten on the go, can can be delivered, and it'll be okay. But at the same time, you've mentioned one of the great things about being able to offer this food is watching people taste it for the first time or being able to explain it to them. And all of a sudden, that opportunity is robbed from you. I mean, 
what, what was that like for you guys? Like, you know, I, that's got to be a spark that helps you going when you're a new business and to all of a sudden have that taken away. Mm-hmm. How did you guys rally around one another? You know, we tried to do as best we could. Um, what we were doing is trying to um, get our product out to everyone as possible and then having them, obviously, if they enjoyed it, having them refer to somebody else. Um, right now, a lot of the ways that people are knowing about food is, you know, social media is through word of mouth. And so we heavily relied on that. You know, while this was taken away from us, that we wouldn't be able to see how people were, you know, enjoying the food or maybe not like enjoying our food. We tried to follow up with the people that we knew that were purchasing our food. Hey, what did you think about it? Did you like it? Could you give us some feedback? Any feedback is good feedback. If it's, you know, negative, what can we change? What can we improve? And so by following up with the people that we knew that were buying from us, you know, that kind of helped keep that, um, I guess, motivation going, right? Because we would hear, oh my God, we loved it. Thank you so much. Or just seeing the continuous and repetitive uh, orders from the same people, you know, there was like, they liked it. If they're, you know, purchasing again and again, um, now this person said, hey, um, they would leave comments for us too. You know, this food is great. Thank you so much. I've recommended you to so-and-so um, in the substitute piece. So, I mean, those little things that maybe, you know, took one minute or two minutes of their time meant everything to us. Now, how do you balance customer feedback? Because you've you've already mentioned you've had a bunch of customers who said, I would love to have tacos from here. <laughs> I'm sure you've had people say, I want chips and salsa or yes. man, it'd be great if I could get guacamole on my tacos. Yes. And you're just like, well, no. <laughs> These are our temples. This is what we decided what our business is. This right. is the cuisine that we're drawing from. We're not going to offer those things. But at the same time, as a business owner, you want to be receptive to people. And if you're hearing, you know, the same things over and over again that don't affect like the core values of your business, you want to be adaptable and be able to say, okay, you know, maybe there is something that we can make an adjustment to. Mm -hmm. How do you how do you balance those two things? Well, um, it is sometimes, you know, very disheartening because sometimes people will come into the restaurant, you know, you know, just focus, laser focused on I want my tacos, especially if they have like young kids and, you know, they can't, you know, explain, hey, maybe we should venture out into trying something else. Um, some, sometimes it is disheartening that you'll see people just walk out sometimes. OK, thank you. And they'll walk out. But there are many times that we say, hey, but. We have this. Give it a try. I promise you're going to like it. Go ahead and, and try this one. I recommend the poblanos and, you know, ground beef. It's really tasty. Or they can say, you know, I was really wanting to try chicken something. And I'm like, we have that here. Maybe not in a taco, but a quesadilla, this, this and this. And so it's really gratifying to be able to switch that, you know, negative thought of we don't have this here to yes, we do in this form. Um, so we have, you know, continuously, like you said, um, balance. Do we change our menu? Do we add tacos just because everyone continues to ask for them? But I feel like um, the large part of where, where we're going with this is that we're going to continue st- staying true to our roots. Um, there are so many restaurants and so many vendors that do provide tacos, that do provide these tortas that they are wanting, that I feel like if they wanted that venue, that option, they have where to go. Um, we don't want to miss out on, on any market, obviously. We would love to keep that money in, but I feel like adding those things would kind of change um, the origin, would really change you know, our vision, and I think that we're just going to continue with what we have. This is what makes you guys unique. Right. I mean, I have no doubt, yes, you could take these these meats and these fillings that you have. And yeah, if you put them in a corn tortilla shell, people would go nuts for them. There's no doubt about that, but it would change the core of what La Sierra is. Like when I think of La Sierra right now, it's the place where I go for menu items that I can't find anywhere else. Exactly. This is something completely different than I might get at some of the South O taco spots, not even to mention any of the Tex-Mex spots. Correct. And I think that's what makes it stick out from all the other ones. So I would just affirm you in that. Don't change anything because what you guys are doing is Thank definitely you. something right. Appreciate it. <clears throat> How just especially during COVID when you're just getting beat down and beat <laughs> down and beat down by changing rules and regulations and You know, even just wondering, like, is what we're doing safe? Because at that point, none of us knew anything to get the positive customer feedback. What what did that do to boo you guys' spirits and keep you uh, 
keep you sane, <laughs> keep you going. Because I went and I looked at your your Google reviews. You guys have 300 reviews on Google right now, mm-hmm. an almost perfect rating. I want to say it's a 4.9. Yes. Like when people try this food, it it's like their eyes are opened for the first time. So what was it like for you to continue to get that positive feedback in a time where there wasn't really a lot of positivity going on? Yeah, we, um, you know, it was really hard for sure. Like you said, we didn't have that, a lot of that customer interaction. Um, we did have the, um, neighbors that kept, you know, coming around and they would say, Hey, we are going to continue to support you because we want you guys to stick around. We want this business to be successful and we want you to stay here. So those comments that just motivation, you know, helped us. And so when one of us of the four, you know, mom, dad, my sister and myself were kind of feeling you know, maybe this is not a good time to open a business. Businesses, you know, um, usually, you know, can fail in the first couple of years. And we're being hit with a a global pandemic. I mean, maybe it's a sign that maybe we shouldn't be here. You know, the other ones, it was, no, we have to keep going. We're going to push each other. So when one was feeling down, the other would kind of just pick up and say, hey, no, remember that so-and-so was just here talking about how great our food was. You know, they have an event coming up or, you know, somebody is sick in their home. Let's send them some food to kind of cheer them up, to to make them feel like we are here. We want you to try some food. We want you to feel well. Here's something thinking of you. Um, those things like kept us going as minimal as an insignificant is it may be or seem. Um, those are the things that really kept us, you know, pushing each other to move forward. Now you've mentioned a couple times, a lot of times in the restaurant, it's your mom, your dad, you and your sister. Yes. I mean, it is a close family dynamic. Well, what is it? What are the different roles other than mom? Mom's a chef. (laughs) What are the different roles that you guys take on in the restaurant? So we do everything um, except the cooking, of course. So, you know, um, our, our offerings as far as like alcoholic beverages are limited. Um, but if, you know, you're wanting a margarita, if you're wanting a michelada, if you're wanting a drink, um, we can switch from being your cashier to being your bartender to being your server. I mean, we wear all, all the hats. Um, you know, we bring out your food, ensure that you don't need anything, um, and kind of just check on you consistently. But we will do everything besides the cooking. That is mom 100%. Yes. Does she even let you guys in the kitchen? She, just to deliver orders, you know, she's just, take this out. This is ready. Let's go. Um, This is fresh. This is done. This will be out in a couple of minutes. Get ready. And, you know, she's just giving the orders back there and we just do whatever she says. Now, you mentioned you guys were doing chicken in Chicago Mm -hmm. and then obviously switch and do something completely different here. I'm sure your mom had cooked these recipes, but to, to figure out how to cook them, not just for my family, but to cook them at scale yes. for larger amounts of people. And I'm doing it now in a commercial kitchen versus a residential kitchen. Yes. I mean, how much of a crash course did she have to put herself through to be ready to produce just this a different amount of food that she was used to? You know, she has a lot of support um, from my father. So while she's the main um, go-to, my dad is her right hand. Whatever, you know, is, you know, we're starting to be low on X amount of thing. My dad is in the back helping prep everything for her. I know that this is, you know, we're running low on this. We... Or we don't have, you know, supplies, we're out getting whatever they need and they are, you know, keeping each other, uh, holding each other accountable and helping. So mom is on the go making everything and dad is making sure she doesn't need anything. If he needs anything, then he has us gathering whatever he needs. How have you guys learned to separate business and family? And I'm sure it helps that you've been doing this a long time. Mm -hmm. And I know that there are obviously going to be conversations about the restaurant that happen outside the restaurant. Right. But at some point you also want to maintain, we have family relationships Mm -hmm. that are not going to be swayed too much by what happens in the restaurant. Our core of who we are is our love for one another. Right. Not this as awesome as it is, this thing that we've created. How do you create those boundaries between your personal and professional relationships? We don't um, have too much time off. I'll start off with that. Our main time off are Mondays. So on this Monday is our, you know, time, our break, 
I would say, away from our daily routine, our daily, you know, running around of getting everything. But even then, uh, we are still out shopping for things that we need for the restaurants. If something was low, we are, you know, making a point to to make sure that we're, you know, stocked up on whatever we need. Um, so as much as we try to say business is business, you know, home is home, it, it kind of bleeds into each other. But we are OK with that because we, you know, incorporate, hey, we're running to, you know, um, Restaurant Depot to get some things. I mean, it's a family trip or two people are going. We'll we'll go grab dinner. We'll, you know, wait for you guys at home. And so while it's, you know at home, we're out of the restaurant, it's still including our business. And that's, you know, something that we are passionate about. So we don't see it so much as, oh God, we're bringing work home. It's more of, hey, did you think of this? Hey, we need to do that. Um, We've also had a very entrepreneurial uh, mindset from my dad. So we're always thinking of new ideas of what we can add to the restaurant. And what do you guys think about this? And we take all of our decisions as a family. So as much as more more commonly people are separating home and um, work, we are mixing them together. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a good balance for us. What's an example of an idea that somebody's had at home and you guys have bounced around a little bit and then incorporated it into the business? Yeah. So most uh, recently we've introduced our um, micheladas into our uh, menu. Um, So our micheladas, if you're familiar or or not familiar with it, it's very similar to what um, is known for most as a red beer. So uh, we thought of, you know, could we implement this now that we have the uh, alcohol license? And so we started mixing different things and coming up with new recipes. And it's been going amazing. Um, You know, it started off from one drink. And then I I came up with the idea. I said, I personally don't like tomato juice. I'm going to make a drink for women, for men who don't like the aftertaste. And so then I came up with an idea, kind of made, tweaked it. And so now we have two offerings. And now, you know, my sister's like, well, I really don't like either one of those. I really prefer the mango. And we said, okay, well, how would you like to do it? And so that just opens up that creativity for all of us. And so now we have three michelada mixes that we are offering, the traditional, the cucumber and the mango. And those are all made from us. Awesome. Yeah. So you guys have been open for about four years now. How have you seen the restaurant most change and evolve during that time? You know, in the beginning, it was a lot of us trying to, how are we going to get people in? How should we market? Um, do we get commercials? Like, what do we do? We're, we're in an area where it's considered mostly like Little Italy, right? So the Hispanic audience and Target are, are all on South O. Um, and so at first we were just honed in on what do we do to commercialize ourselves? But because we've had such an amazing support from all of our neighbors, from people who have come and enjoyed it and told other people, now we're, we're strictly or, or more focused on providing that quality food, quality customer service, and, and it's kind of handling itself. By providing this um, to our customers, then they're you know taking care of the marketing for us. We're still on social media and we still want to make a, a you know an impact you know to commercialize ourselves. But I feel like just by providing this quality um, product and quality service, it's kind of shifting our mindset of how do we do this? How do we target people? And now it's just doing itself. Word of mouth is definitely an unbelievable thing for you guys, and that's. Really because, I mean, I'm very plugged into social media. I never see anything but, like, rave reviews about La Sierra. People don't, don't, don't seem to have bad experiences. And for the most part, like, people who have been there champion it. And I know one that sticks out in my head is Stacy Winters from Omaha Food Lovers. I mean, anytime somebody has a question in that group, mm-hmm. like, hey, what's this La Sierra place? Or I heard this place is good. Is it worth the hype? He's jumping in there and he's saying, yes, you need to go there. And I think that's just because two things. One, like, like we talked about, you guys are such a unique business that when someone, you know, thinks of either food from Durango or, you know, unique Mexican food authentic gorditas boom you are top of mind right Right. away and two you guys just have such quality and you i mean every restaurant has bad days or has bad dishes but you guys appear to be very few and far between so i commend you on that thank you 
I would just like to add something to that. Um, and as much as we want to say, like, it's great and we have these amazing reviews and everyone likes it. There are people, obviously, who, you know, have a different opinion, who may have gone there and say, hey, I don't like this. I didn't like it for, you know, X, Y, Z reason. And we respect that. We as a business understand that not everyone is going to enjoy it. Right. As much as we strive to please everyone, to have um, have them enjoy our food that we've, you know, put our passion and our work and our efforts to, we understand that not everyone is going to like it, that they're going to want, you know, their tax max, that they're going to want, you know, sour cream or cheddar cheese or anything else. So we, we definitely understand that. We're just grateful for those people that even though they didn't like it or have not liked it, went and still tried it. Now they can say, I've been to La Sierra. I don't like that one. But now they have 13 other options to, you know, try and say, I like it or I don't like it. So all, all feedback is welcome. What do you see as the future for La Sierra? We would love to have the opportunity to expand. Um, We have, you know, a lot of people have asked us like, hey, we're making the drive here from 204th or, you know, we're, we're visiting you from Norfolk because we don't have anything like this over there. How about opening something out west or, hey, um, this new shopping center opened, you know, close to where we're from. Can you please consider moving closer to where we are? Um, We would definitely love the opportunity to expand our offerings a little bit further west to give other people an opportunity to try our food that maybe are not willing to make the drive down to um, the old market or close to the old market. So we would definitely love that. All right. Two more questions for you that I like to ask just about every guest I have on here. First one is this. What is one thing about the restaurant industry that you feel like diners outside of the restaurant industry don't understand, but you wish that they did. That they didn't. That they don't understand and wish that we did. Um, what would that be? Um, I think a lot of the times that they're wanting more options, um, especially for us with our limited menu, I feel like sometimes they're coming in and they're asking, for example, with the drink and they'll say, well, can I have a frozen margarita? Can I have a, you know, mango, strawberry, raspberry, all these different things. And while we we don't offer that large selection of variety, I wish that they knew that um, because our, our menu and our offerings are smaller, they're smaller because they are, you know, homemade, because they're quality. We don't have syrups that we're mixing that other places, you know, because they have a large quantity of customers, they don't have, you know, the advantage of making everything fresh, squeezed lime. They don't have the opportunity to make all of these things because they have to serve such a large number of customers that, uh, you know, a flavored syrup will do. And here you go. Here's your flavored margarita. So while we don't have as many offerings, it is is homemade. They're made um, from scratch. They're made from quality, just like everything else that we offer. Yeah. You guys, you're not doing the cheesecake menu, (laughs) cheesecake factory menu, excuse (laughs) me, where you've got, you know, 15 pages of pastas and (laughs) steaks and, you know, all these disparate different things. You've got four menu items and you've got 14 fillings. But if someone comes in, they can feel very confident that all, that a lot of intention and just, uh, attention to detail has been put into each of those 14 and that gives you confidence that you're not going to have a lot of misses in between. Correct. Um, last question, favorite part about being in the restaurant industry. You know, just having people that are also in the restaurant industry coming to try your food and to say, oh, my God, this is amazing. I love it. We love it. It's great. Um, This is what I would change or this is like everything that you're offering right now is is good. Um, I wouldn't change anything. Um, Just hearing these different things from people that we value to us, you know, it's inspiring. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, Brenda, you mentioned Mondays are your days off. You were working hard (laughs) yesterday. Yeah. I thank you so much for taking the time to come into the studio today and and talk about La Sierra and uh, hopefully just let even more people know about this restaurant, this style of food. And I hope that they come in and experience it. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Omahans, get into La Sierra. This is something probably different than you've had or if you've had it before you know exactly what i'm talking (laughs) about and you want to experience it again so thank you for watching listening however you're consuming this as always thanks for eating with us thank you